Hello, my name is Shannon Kringen and you are watching Goddess Kring. I'm an artist. I live in Seattle, Washington, United States of America. And uh, I just wanted to say a few things about healthcare in the United States of America. I call the USA USA Incorporated because it appears more and more that corporations run the government. The government does not run the corporations and the government does not work for the people. The government tells, the government basically does whatever the corporations tell the government to do. I am angry and frustrated and scared and I'm kind of afraid that the new healthcare system is going to be worse than the previous one but I don't want to be overly cynical and negative about it. I feel like people that are freaking out and being completely negative about it are overreacting, but I also feel like the people that are cheering it and confident that it will get better, and it's a step towards single payer. I think that's a little bit naive. I'm not sure if where we're going is really in a direction of single payer. I wanted to say a few things, some things about healthcare. I also wanted to say, uh, talk about the reasons why I love Europe so much. I've been to Europe six times over the last 15 years. I have traveled six different times to various European countries. I've been to Italy, France, Belgium, England, Scotland, Norway, Spain, I've been to Australia, I've been to Mexico, and Amsterdam, Holland, I loved as well. And some of the things that I really, really love about Europe are the arts are more funded, there's universal health care, socialized medicine basically, and I've talked to my friends in, I have a friend in Holland, a friend in Norway, a friend in Scotland, as well as a friend in England. And all of them, I've asked them about their health care, and they all say that they're fairly happy with it. That it's not perfect, but there's never a big bill. And um, their insurance, their health insurance, it's not really insurance, it's actual health care. I don't really want health insurance, I want health care. Meaning, I don't want to pay a bill every month hoping that I won't need to go to a doctor. I want to actually just go to the doctor whenever I need to and not worry about a big bill. I want it built into our taxes. That's kind of the way it works in most of Europe, is people do pay high taxes in Europe, but you know what Europeans get? for their high taxes. They get universal health care, meaning they don't have big bills and they can go see a doctor whenever they want. If you're ever in a horrible car accident or you get cancer or some horrible disease or need some major expensive surgery, you don't have to worry about a big bill. Women who give birth to babies in Europe do not have to worry about $30,000 bills like I know some American women when they go and have a c-section they they want natural childbirth and then that doesn't work and they get a c-section thirty thousand dollars is sometimes the bill they get that's insane in Europe that's unheard of another thing I like about Europe okay there's the health care there's really good trains in Europe like modern high-speed trains in Europe in Oslo every 15 minutes a train comes and it's not that expensive and if you buy a ticket, you can use it for the train, the tram, and the bus, and mix and match. Museums are less expensive in Europe. There are nude statues all over the place in Europe, and nobody's like going like this, hiding their children's eyes from seeing nude art. For a living, I model nude for art classes, and so I am a figure model, meaning I am the naked person that they paint and draw, and I've done that for 20 years. I'm 43 right now, and in Seattle, I have modeled for 20 years for different artists. And so I'm used to being nude around artists and seeing beautiful paintings and drawings and sculptures and photographs of nude people in a beautiful artistic way. And in Europe, it's not considered a big deal. In fact, in Germany, 
a lot of the parks are clothing optional and you can see entire families, children, mothers, fathers, grandparents, old people, young people, whatever, fat, skinny, short, tall, whatever, nude, bathing, sunbathing, having a picnic, whatever. And it's not considered sexual and dangerous to children and it's not considered um, abusive or whatever. It's not considered perverted. And I've gone in this country, in the United States of America, I've gone to naturist gatherings that are clothing optional where you go out and you swim and nude and you just do everything nude or clothing optional and it's just a natural comfortable way to be. It's a form of naturism and in Europe what I'm saying is in Europe it's not that weird to do clothing optional things and it's not that weird to bathe nude or to go to a what they call them is leisure clubs instead of gyms and workout areas they call them leisure clubs and I recently a few months ago I went to Edinburgh Scotland and my friend Neil from England met me there and we had a great time, and um, we, Stella, kitty kitty, my cat is, um, Stella, my cat is meowing, okay, sorry. So, I went to Edinburgh, Scotland for 10 days, and I had a wonderful time. Um, I belong to that website called couchsurfing.com, and I was able to couch surf with some nice people that lived in Scotland, and people showed me around, I met an expatriate, who lives in Scotland, this musician, and he showed me around. Okay, Stella. Okay, sorry, I didn't. Sorry, here's my kitty Stella. Stella. I'm sorry, Stella. You're gonna have to wait, okay? I love you. Mwah. Good kitty. Okay, sorry, I didn't mean for this video to be so casual. So, I love Europe. Uh, it's not utopia. I don't know if I'm either going to try to move to Europe, get a job there, work there, be a figure model there or something, and leave this country, or should I stay in the United States and just make sure that I have a career that enables me to travel at least once a year out of this country. I absolutely love to travel. I loved Mexico. I loved Australia. I love being on the left. They drive on the left in Australia and they drive on the left in uh, the UK, in Scotland and England, and I love it. I'm left-handed. I don't know if that's why. I like to walk on the left, I like to drive on the left. When I ride my bicycle, I like to go down one-way streets so I can be on the left side. I like to walk up staircases on the left side. I like to do everything on the left because I'm left-handed. I'm also politically, obviously, very left. I also like Europe because they don't really like um, genetically modified foods the way we do here in this country. And so there's not that much genetically modified food in Europe. And in fact, when there is, they have to label it GMO. Whereas in this country, we don't have to do that. Also in Europe, you only pay for cell phones in one direction. When you call out or text out, you pay for those minutes. When someone calls you or texts you, you don't get charged for those minutes. So it's a more fair system. I love the museums in Europe. I love the nude statues. I love the attitude about sex in Europe is a lot more natural than the attitude we have about sex in America. It seems like in the US, People are either puritanical about sex and they think it's bad and wrong and shameful and sinful or they're like obsessed with it and really into pornography and I'm not really anti-porn. In fact, I've done porn myself and I have you know, participated in doing porn and making porn myself and doing nude erotic photo shoots. I've done that. I'm not against porn, but to obsess about sex, to repress your sexual energy and then become obsessed with sex. It seems like that's what a lot of Americans do. We pretend like we don't really like sex, it's bad, blah, 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 and then we sneak around and obsess about it. So that's what creeps me out about the puritanical American way of thinking about sex. What I like about the United States of America is I love Bob Dylan and Johnny Cash and lots of American artists. Um, I love the creativity. The um, I like the work ethic in America. I like that people work hard and people try to come up with new ideas. I like that. But what I don't like about America is the lack of balance. In Europe, a lot of people take paid vacations. That's considered normal. It's not considered a luxury that you save up money to go on vacation. Europeans um, quite often take five weeks a year off and some of it gets, some of it's paid depending on the person's job. 
they get paid vacation and it's considered normal and healthy and a balanced way to live your life because if you have a nice holiday and you rest and you have fun then you come back and you're a good worker for your company whereas in America we seem to think we have to work our butts off and hope we get rich one day so we can take vacation that's silly so there's a more of a balance in Europe between work and play healthy attitude about sex, more of a natural attitude about sex, um, really good food in Europe, really good. Like I went to grocery stores in uh, Oslo, Norway and Edinburgh, Scotland, and I went and I got the cheapest pastries, like, like little croissants or whatever, and they're really good. And if you go in the United States, if you go to some like cheapo grocery store and you get the cheapest pastry like croissant you can find, it's going to be horrible. It's going to be full of hydrogenated oil, corn syrup fake artificial ingredients and it's going to have the texture of Wonder Bread, really gross. If you go to Europe and you buy the cheapest croissant you can find, it's going to taste like a real croissant from a bakery because I don't know why, they just bake better in Europe. You know, food, the quality of food in Europe and the yogurt, the yogurt in Europe is nice and tart. In America, it's like we put way too much sugar in everything. And in Europe, I swear, every time I go, I've been six different times over the last 15 years. And every time I go, I'm like, I really do prefer the food here. It's better. It's not as sweet. You know, you can taste when you get like black uh, blueberry yogurt, you taste the blueberries, not sugar. Blueberries and tart yogurt. It's like so good. And the museums are beautiful and they're not that expensive to get into. And art is taken seriously in Europe and they have little tiny electric cars and they have more solar panels and better trains and they put more money, it's more socialized, so they put more money into the mass transit, they put more money into the museums. And also they don't waste time painting over graffiti. There's a lot of graffiti in Europe and they just leave it. They don't paint over it. It's a waste of money. So it's kind of like, I don't know, I just, I feel more at home in Europe. And, you know, this country, uh, the USA, is beautiful in some ways, but I don't know. I'm not really... And also, oh, shopping malls. I'm a photographer. And in shopping malls in the USA now, if you go into a shopping mall, because I have a tendency to like to take pictures of myself reflected in mirrors and stuff, and I go into shopping malls and I look for weird reflective objects and I take photos of myself, security guards come up to you and they say, this is private property. No photography allowed. So in shopping malls in the United States of America, it's private property. No photography allowed. And in Europe, I, d I tested it. I went and I took photos of myself reflected in, th in shopping malls in Europe. Nobody said a word. In fact, I don't even think they had security guards in the shopping malls. So nobody came up to me and said, what are you doing, ma'am? Or you can't take pictures. It's like nobody cared. And people noticed I was taking pictures. I could see people were like, hmm, yeah, she's taking pictures, whatever. Nobody, nobody said anything to me. Nobody said I couldn't do it. And it was just, I felt more free. I felt more, I ran around and took pictures and no, and no security guards t told me I couldn't. So that's just one example right there. In addition to cell phones are more fair in Europe. And in fact, when I was in Edinburgh, I had my, um, cell phone, uh, I had my, my cell phone, my smartphone unlocked so I could switch out the SIM card. And so I, I took a, I, at a grocery store for one pound, I bought a SIM card that worked in Scotland. I put it in my phone and then without using my bank card in any way, because it would be more expensive, I just put cash. I got pounds from my, with my debit card and I just topped it up. They call it topping it up. I just put like about ten dollars worth of, of British pounds uh, in, onto my new onto my SIM card that worked in Scotland and I was able to for free I was able to receive texts and calls for free and I only had to pay for the minutes I was calling out so I could make local calls in Scotland and so for ten dollars ten or twenty dollars I was able to for 10 days I had a, a cell phone that worked in Europe and it was an American cell phone that was unlocked. I switched out the SIM card. It worked really well. I don't think we even have that in this country. If a European comes to the US and they try to switch out their SIM card and try to get some inexpensive American SIM card that works in America, I don't even know if we have that. Also in Europe, 
you, it's easy to get. A lot of Europeans have friends in America and they have really good deals on phone, on long distance calling, international calling. And I've tried and I can't seem to find where I can get a good deal so I can call my friends in Europe, really expect, you know, five cents a minute or 10 cents a minute or whatever. So basically in Europe, it's considered more normal to travel to other countries and to have more international friendships and to let people stay with you and let foreigner foreigners from other countries stay with you. I love being around all the different languages in Europe. Again, I love the museums. I love the nude statues, the history, the architecture. I love the attitude about art. There's a lot of uh, musicians on the street busking and it's taken more seriously as well as more professional um, you know, the government, the government of Germany, in fact, I know, puts a lot of money into the arts, and it's considered like a legit thing in Holland, too. It's considered like art is considered something important for culture and for the heart and soul of humanity. And the more socialistic attitude, you know, in Norway, if you, if you buy an electric car, the Norwegian government lets you park for free because they want to give you an incentive. And in I know in Germany, if you have solar panels, the government will pay you for that and they will help they encourage you. The healthcare system in Europe is amazing. In most of Europe that I know about, it's amazing. I have stories I could tell.